All right, so today we're making this. And what is this? This is something that'll make this turn into this. We've laid the basis for this in two previous videos. Uh, that's talking about making a cell shaded look. Today we're going to pixelate that. You can just do the pixelation without the cell shading. To make it look as close to authentic pixel art as possible, you probably want to have a cell shaded cartoony look to begin with. Just the pixelation without the cell shading will look like this. As you can see, still plenty good, but once we add in the cell shading itself and then the line shaders on top of that, we really get what we're looking for. So let's dive into our pixelation effect. So what we have here is a material instance with a scalar parameter that will influence the resolution of our output. So if I set this to 1080, this will be a 1080 output. I don't know if you can see the difference on YouTube, but if I set this to 2160, it'll be 4K, just a little bit sharper. But then if we set this back to like 480, we got a slightly pixelated 480p look. And if we set it all the way down to like 240, we get a really pixelated look. Uh, for what I was showing you before, I think it had it at 160, which is close to the resolution that the Game Boy Advanced uses. So let's go recreate this. First off, of course, we're going to make a new material called post-process uh, pixelated uh, or something along those lines. Then, first things first, material domain is going to change from surface to post-processing. The very first node we're going to add is a screen resolution node. We're going to use the visible resolution and divide that by itself. This is a vector 2, so this has the information on the width and the height of the screen. So let's say you have a 1080p screen, that's going to be 1920 by 1080. By dividing that by itself, it's turning into a 1 by 1. So now those two values have to be split up so that we can individually manipulate them for it. So we do that by adding a component mask for R and then also adding a component mask for G. That being the first value and the second value in your vector. Now the R value is the X value, so that's the horizontal amount of pixels. The G value will be the Y value, so the height amount of pixels. Things like 480p, 1080p, 240p, that's the amount of high pixels you have in a screen. So 1080p is 1920 pixels wide and 1080 high. It's called after the amount of height it has. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply that value, the G value, which is the amount of Y pixels we have, by a scalar parameter, which you can get by holding S and just clicking on your screen. And then we'll call this Y resolution. By default, let's set that to 240. And we hook that up into there. We'll actually use the same scalar parameter. So let's copy and paste that here for the X value. But the X value is going to have to be a little bit higher than the Y value. So we then multiply that again. And we'll multiply this by a scalar parameter that we call aspects. This will be the aspect ratio uh, and for a normal 16 by 9 that's going to be 1.77. So that means that for every pixel in the height there's going to be 1.77 pixels in the width. If you want something else than 16 by 9 you can simply get this value by dividing the 16 by 9. So 16 divided by 9 is 1.7777 repeating. If you, for instance, want to uh, make it work on a 21 by 9 monitor, you would say that this value is 2.33333 repeating, so 2.33. Now we've got to add these two values back together. We can simply do that by an append vector and putting this into the A and that into the B. Now we have a vector 2 value again with the proper aspect ratio and the amount of pixels that we want. Now we add a screen position node here and multiply the viewport UV by this outputs. And we want to round up this value to the nearest integer, so we use seal for ceiling that always rounds up to the nearest integer. We're also going to divide this appended value. We're going to plug this into the B and have it divided by one. But first, let's multiply these two values together and put them into a scene texture that we set to post-processing input zero. That'll go into the UVs. And that can then go into the emissive color. 
And there we go, we can already see here in the preview that we can start messing around with the resolution and decreasing it a lot or increasing it a lot. And that really is everything there is to it. You can now use a material instance of this with uh, different aspect ratios and different resolutions, just like you want for every single level. And the most wonderful part to this is that on full screen like this, the game is now running at a resolution of uh, about 160p. But if I now make this window a little smaller, with the node setup we have, it's still running at a resolution of about 160p. So at this resolution, it actually doesn't look half bad because the resolution itself is very low, but the window is very small. The outlines are way too thick for a resolution like this, so you're going to have to fine tune things a little bit. But uh, in short, that is how you make a pixelated effect and make your game look like, even though it's 3D, look like it's running on sprites. Of course, short disclaimer here is that you can make these post-processing effects as much as you want. Your base art and your base game are going to have to support the illusion of it being sprites. So you're going to want a more 2D perspective. This is a very 3D game and as such, the illusion really falls apart very, very quickly as to this being a game made with pixel art. But if this is a two-dimensional game, or a top-down game or whatever and the proportions of your models really match with uh, sprite art you can really really make a fully 3d game look just as good as any 2d pixel art there's not one single magical button that'll turn one thing into another there's no single button that'll make your game beautiful but with these effects you can certainly have a great start